Hello, welcome to Archline XP 2022 Interior Preliminary Course Kitchen Design Workshop. I hope that you have completed the projects from the previous lecture. Let's start designing the kitchen. I will open the program and click on Open Project to select the kitchen designed by Andrea Nagy. As you can see, we plotted the location and the size of the cabinets in advance. First, save the project using File Save Project As. You may want to save it to a separate file. Let's take a look at how the kitchen will look. This is the L-shaped kitchen we are going to make. One side will be prepared with an anthracite colored front, the other side with a white colored front. We will use the interior KBB cabinet command. In the first tab, we will set the basic parameters. The width, which is 600 mm, the depth, which is 550 mm, and the height. The space for the legs is 100 mm, the carcass height is 760 mm, giving a total height of 860 mm. On the next tab, we need to set the basic front and the handle. I will choose this anthracite colored panel and the handle will be this simple bar handle 120. On the third tab, we will set the bordering panels. On the top panel tab, I turn off the default setting and set the sync corpus panel. For the back panel, I turn off the default setting in the same way and choose the back corpus panel. I will place the door on the cabinet. Under the door tab, I will select the left or right type and I will choose the fully overlay and to open to the left side. Finally, I will create the door with the green tick button. The handle still needs to be repositioned. On the Handle tab, I switch the Custom Position checkbox and select the top center handle position with stretching. In General Settings tab, at the Representation in 2D, I select with Closed Doors option. We save it to the library with the Save As command named Anthracite Lower Cabinet under Kitchen Category and Base Cabinet Subcategory. We can enter the producer too. I place it on the floor plan with OK button. I will place five instances of the cabinet onto the drawing next to each other and modify them separately afterwards. Let's look at the result in 3D. The first cabinet will be the corner cabinet. It is a double white cabinet with one fixed and one opening door. Therefore, the second one has to be deleted to fit the corner cabinet in. I click on the first cabinet and change its properties. The width is 1200 mm. The original door must be removed. The door can be selected in two ways. I click on the front and then on the door. The door is then selected. Press X to delete it. The other way to select it is to click on the door while holding down the Alt key. First, we will create a division at the front. Under the Dividers tab, we select Single Vertical one and the Option Only Division. I set the left side distance to 600 mm. By clicking on the green tick, two zones are created on the front, which can be managed separately. First, I place a side opening door in the right zone. I go to the door tab and choose the side opening door, which is fully overlay and opens to the left. I set the custom position of the handle. Then I click on the left zone and place a fixed door here. I save the corner cabinet to the library by selecting Save as Comments so I don't override the previously saved cabinet. In the next corpus we will place an oven. So let's select it and modify its properties. 
By odd clicking, I select the door and delete it. I create a single horizontal division with shelf 150 mm from the bottom. The oven will be placed on this shelf and I will create a drawer under this. I click on the bottom zone first. I select the drawers tab and place a single drawer with font. I hide the handle in the handle tab. I click in the upper zone. In the appliances tab I select milk combi oven. I use the original item size and create it. The oven is not yet in place, so it must be moved forward along the green axis and down along the blue axis. Now the oven is perfectly in place. We save it to the library using the save as command. The next cabinet will be a hidden drawer cabinet. In the same way as before, I select the door by art clicking and delete it. Clicking on the drawer tab, I will select the multiple drawers with single front type and change the number of items to three. The hidden drawers are done. To make them visible, I click on the first tab and select the totally open option. The three drawers are visible now. I go back to the closed view. The handle should be set to the custom position and stretched option should be used. I save it to the library with Save S under the name of Anthracite Lower Cabinet Drawers 1. Now, on the other side of the L-shaped corpus, I will make a wide drawer cabinet. To do this, I activate the floor plan view, I select Interior KBB Cabinet. Here, I will load the Anthracite Bottom Cabinet Drawers 1 that I just saved and will modify it. On the first tab, I rewrite the width to 900mm. I use art clicking on the drawer and select multiple with front type. I change the last distance to 400 mm. The other two drawers will be the same size. In the multiple with front type, we can set up to three different drawer width. The first, the last and the intermediate ones. If we need more than three different drawer sizes, we should first divide the front and then create the drawers one by one using the single drawer with front command. Let's save the wide drawer cabinet to the library. I place it on the floor plan onto the predefined line. I select the free placement and rotate it by 90 degrees. I will place the next two cabinets from the design center. I will search for the anthracite lower cabinet I've just saved and drag it into the floor plan. Let's look at it in 3D. In the rendering image, we can see that the front of the cabinets on the left is white. So let's make a white matte front. I select Interior KBB Cabinet Door menu. First, we need to set the cabinet door front profile, which is the rectangle simple and its thickness. This can remain 20 mm. The material will be matte white. I save it in the library as matte white front. I can place it, but I delete it because I don't need it on the floor plan. I look in the library for the cabinet door I created and drag it onto the furniture by selecting the Use as Carcass front option. 
I click on the other two cabinets, then I press Enter to exit the command. I will add a dishwasher from the Design Center. I type in dishwasher, then drag it onto the Edge cabinet. I select the Replace unit with the same with only option. I also add the white front to this cabinet to have a uniform appearance. The next step is to create the countertop. Let's activate the floor plan and select Interior KBB Countertop Countertop by Cabinets. I select the cabinets. It is enough to select the carcass at the ends and corner to determine the path of the worktop. We need to set the properties of the countertop. In the first tab, I change the width, which will be 600 mm. The thickness is 40 mm. I also set the material. On the left side, I use a vertical panel to close it, which will ensure the stability of the counter. Its height is 900 mm. I turn off the wall strip and the countertop edge. The joint of the tops is set to option 1. I accept the settings. Let's look at the 3D model. We can see that the side of the dishwasher is sticking out of the vertical panel on the left, so the countertop needs to be extended by a thickness. With the worktop selected, I change its length by 40 mm. Let's look at the 3D model again. It's perfect now. We further modified the property of the countertop. We will place a thing on the left and a hob on the right. I select the thing called Canon One Basin Sink. Set the distance from the left side to 940 mm. Finally, I create it by pressing the green tick button. Next, I place a tab on the sink. I click on the tab icon, select this cutterman tab and move it to the correct position. The hob will be placed on the right side, so that side of the countertop should be selected. On the Hob tab, I select the Induction Hob and place it. The distance from the left side is 1500 mm. I lift it by 5 mm and move it back by 10 mm. I save it to the library as a WS counter. I will place the rest of the cabinets from the design center. Let's have a look at the rendered image. I have to place these cabinets and create uh, the box between them. I activate the floor plan and look for anthracite tool cabinet from the design center. Drag it onto the floor plan and place it in the corner on the base cabinet. As there is already a cabinet here, the program offers a choice. Here I select the Object Placement option. The relative height of the cabinet is 900 mm, so it will be placed on top of the corner cabinet. The next tall cabinet is the fridge. Drag it onto the floor plan and place it in line with the cabinet on the right. I will look for wall units, placing the anthracite wall cabinet first, then the one that opens upwards. When placing the furniture, the program will monitor the position, which we will help us to fit it exactly. If there is a problem, an exclamation mark will be displayed. This function can be deactivated by selecting the free placement command. Here we will have the box around, so I need to offset the top cabinet by 20 mm so it is exactly centered.
Now we will make the top box from a worktop. To do this, we will use the interior KBB countertop, countertop by profile command. I specify the first point of the worksheet, then the end point, and press Enter to create it. I click on the Save icon to select the previous countertop so we can work with its parameters. I change the width to 570 mm and the thickness to 20 mm. I switch on the right side panel too. The height of the panel is 920 mm. This box has a back plate. I create it with a use of the wall strip. Its profile must be adjusted. Rectangular profile 5 mm wide and 920 mm high. I also set the material. This is not correct, because the backing should be below the worktop. So I double-click on the profile and select the top left reference point and accept it. And it is done. We need to specify the relative elevation, which is 1800 mm. Here we have a small issue. The height of the back should be 940 mm, so the edges will be aligned. Let's accept it. The box is ready. Now we will create a planes also on the floor plan. I choose interior KBB, KBB planes, KBB planes by profile. Let's start from here, then select the corner point and finish in the end point of the cabinet. I accept it with enter. Let's modify it. Its materials should be aluminium. The cross-sectional profile of the planes shall be 20 by 100 mm. Let's look at this in the 3D. We can see that the planes created in the slab. The reference point of the profile must be moved to the lower right to get the correct vertical position. The planes should be moved by 50 mm towards the wall using the offset or command. We finish the kitchen. In the next step, we will create dimensioned wall views, two image views, and one vector view. We can do this under documentation, wall views. But first, let's look at the settings. Let's start with one of the image-based wall view. The create dimensions for cabinet option should be active. The cabinet doors should be closed. I select normal length dimensions for both horizontal and vertical dimension style. Let's activate the floor plan and select documentation, wall view, single wall view. I click on the wall which I would like to make a wall view of and use the arrow to specify the distance. By pressing enter, the wall view is created and I can place it on the floor plan. Wall view dimensions can be edited. By clicking on it, we can see that it is a group. I can enter in it by right-clicking on it and selecting the Edit Group option from the local menu. Now I can easily edit the dimensions. To exit the group, right-click on an item in it and select Close Group. Now let's create another image wall view with the elevation values. In the settings, let's switch to the Elevation on Section option. I select Wall View, Single Wall View and click on the wall on the left. I specify where to view from and change the width of the wall view. By clicking on the blue rectangle and selecting the offset, I change the width of the wall view to include only the kitchen units. I hit Enter to accept and place it. We can also edit the dimensions here by entering the group. Let's close it. Now let's create a dimensioned vector wall view without cabinet doors. In the properties, I select the vector drawing with hidden lines. I will display it without front and use the elevation on section option. I accept the settings. 
Using the wall view, single wall view command, we select the wall and place the wall view. This wall view is also created as a group. By entering in it, the dimensioning can be edited. After editing, don't forget to close the group. We see symbols appearing near the walls and below the wall views. These help to link them together. In the wall view properties, we can turn the symbols on off or select a suitable one for us. In the following, we will dimension the cabinets in one step on the floor plan. I select the dimension cabinet define all command. All storage furniture widths are scaled. Since the floor plan has several cabinets on top of each other, their dimensions overlap, so I position them correctly. Let's make the cabinet consignation. I choose Documentation, Quantity Takeoff, Excel List, Interior Calculation and turn on Cabinets Only. I save the list. If the Excel program is installed on your computer, the spreadsheet will open. The detailed list contains the cabinets created with the KBB tool and placed in the plan. It displays the names of the cabinets as well the number of copies and the size of the block boards that make up the cabinets. An exploded view of the corpuses can also be made. Right-click on the chosen item and select Cabinet Exploded View from the local menu. The figure is placed on the floor plan. It shows the panels of the cabinet in detail with an explanatory list. This is also a group, so we can edit it by entering in it. After editing, the group must be closed. In the last step, let's show our client the interior layout of the cabinets on the 3D view. I use the clear screen and maximize view feature to see the 3D model properly. Click on one of the kitchen cabinets and then on the opening animation icon. These animations make it easier for the customer to understand the functionality of the kitchen. That brings us to the end of today's workshop. Thank you for joining me. Practice the kitchen designing until the next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.